Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve delete nodes and return forest. A pretty good problem, I think, actually. So we're given a binary tree that looks like this. Every value is going to be unique. It's not necessarily a binary search tree. There's not necessarily any sorted property. But within this tree, we're also given a second parameter, which is a list of values. Those are the values we want to delete from this tree, meaning we actually want to physically delete these nodes, meaning delete this node and delete this node. Now, after we delete all the nodes, we are going to end up with this like imagine this is gone and imagine this is gone now we actually have three trees we have one tree over here since this node broke this is not connected now to these children and these children aren't connected by anything either so this is by itself and this is by itself we have one two three trees remaining what we want to do is return the root of each of these trees in the form of a list so there's two phases of this problem. Do the deletions, obviously. And second is collect the new roots. Believe it or not, phase one is so much easier than phase two. So I'm actually going to start with it. How do I know it's easy? Because usually when we're doing deletions in a tree, it's actually pretty hard. It's kind of complicated. Just thinking about it might make you nervous. But let me tell you why it shouldn't. Usually when we delete a node, we need to replace that node and then, you know, do a bunch of pointer manipulation to make sure that this stays connected. But we actually don't need to do that in this case. So actually the deletion is going to be trivial. I have a pretty deep understanding of trees. Most of this stuff I think I cover in my beginner's course, actually. So you don't need to be like a super expert. Doing a deletion on a binary tree isn't super hard. There are two ways to think about it. Think about it from the root perspective, like the parent perspective, rather. Suppose we're trying to delete the node too. We could do it from the parent, right? We could say, okay, my left child is the node that I'm trying to delete. So how do I do it? Well, we don't have to set the pointer to all the way down here. We can literally just set the pointer now to null. That is one valid way of doing it. And then, you know, maybe we could run DFS here to delete some of the other nodes. Delete four, maybe delete five, whatever. That's a valid way to do it. I prefer to kind of do it bottom up. So I'm actually going to code it up where I'm going to keep that connection so far. I'm going to recursively then run DFS here. We can actually do all of these deletions in linear time by just traversing over the list once. We go through, of course, like with a recursive DFS, we go through every node, starting with the left subtree, then going to the right subtree every time we see a node that we're trying to delete this is what we're going to do we're going to return up to the parent null so if this is a node i want to delete i'm going to continue running dfs firstly this is not the first thing we're going to do first we're going to keep running dfs on all the children after the fact after that's done to my parent if two is a node i want to delete to the parent, I'm going to return null because from the parent's recursive call, it's going to be simple. We're just going to say, OK, run DFS on the left child. But we're going to say root dot left is going to be assigned to the result of that recursive call. I'm sorry that this is written diagonally. I'm not sure what I'm doing. But I hope you get the point. If we return null, obviously the left pointer will then be set to null. But what about the other case? What about from here, three? What if three is not a node we want to delete? Well, it's pretty simple. Just return the node itself, right? Just return this node. Therefore, the right pointer will still be connected. It will remain unchanged. So I hope you understand why doing all the deletions throughout this entire tree is not difficult. So now that we got that out of the way, the harder part might be actually collecting the roots. We're going to need to get a little bit creative for this part. So the first question you might ask is, can we do this as we do the deletions? Because if we can, that would be the best solution. That'd be the easiest way. Or maybe we need a separate DFS to do it. Well, I definitely would rather not do a separate DFS. Can you tell me why? If we break the pointers, going to be kind of hard to traverse a graph that's not connected, right? I mean, maybe there is a solution where we can do that. It probably wouldn't be a traditional DFS. DFS. Maybe while we do the deletions, we should collect the nodes and stuff like that. I don't know if there is a solution with that. Maybe you can think of one, but I can think of a slightly easier solution. Think of this for a second. When we're actually performing the deletions, recall that 
The nodes that we want to delete, suppose like it's two and six, they're given to us in the form of a list. So the first thing you'd probably want to do is convert these into a hash set. So then every time we see a node, we can immediately look it up efficiently to see if that's the type of node that we want to delete. Okay, so then what do we do? Like, suppose I'm trying to collect the roots. How do you do it? Well, there's no magic way. It's not just going to magically pop up into your mind. So don't be lazy. Get a piece of paper, draw out some examples, and see what you can come up with. This is what I can come up with. We start initially, we know that we only have one root. So if we don't delete this node, then this is going to be a part of the result. We definitely want to have that node one in the result. But if we delete it, we probably want to remove it from the result. So maybe I'm keeping track of the output, which we want to return in the form of a list. But as we go, removing from this list, it could grow. So removing from it could be inefficient. We don't know. So it might be better to keep track of the result in the form of a hash set to begin with. And then at the end, we can easily convert that hash set into a list in linear time. So that's kind of the intuition of why I'm doing that. But still, let's think of some examples. Suppose I delete the root. OK, I said we're going to remove it from that hash set. Great. But now what? What is the result going to be now? What are the remaining roots? Well, if we delete a node, if it has a left child, that just became a valid root. If it has a right child, that just became a valid root. And that's not only true when we do so from the root node. Imagine if the root stayed the same. Imagine if I deleted this node too instead. Well, its left child became a root. Its right child became a root. So of course, we'd add those to that hash set that I was talking about. And we can again do them pretty efficiently. Adding to a hash set is constant time. So we're getting closer. The only thing I want to clarify now is the order kind of matters. Suppose we're doing a DFS, we get to the root. Suppose we do want to delete the root. OK, great. So I'll keep track of like the result. Imagine this is a hash set. Sorry. Imagine one is initially in the hash set. We deleted it, so we remove one. But then we'll add its left and right child. OK, I'm going to add two. I'm going to add three. These are the nodes. We're actually adding the nodes, not just the values, because we want to return the nodes. Now we do that. We continue the DFS. We go to the left point. Pointer. Suppose we want to delete this node as well. So that's fine. We can now delete this from the hash set as well. So it looks like the order just by doing it from top to bottom is fine. You probably recall me saying that we're actually going to do it bottom up. But the bottom up deletions, that was when we were actually removing the nodes from the tree. By removing, I mean like manipulating the pointers. That's the part that we're doing bottom up. But in terms of collecting the roots, that's what we're actually doing top down. So that might be kind of confusing. There might be a way you can collect the roots bottom up as well, but I think it's probably more intuitive to do it this way because in terms of collecting the roots, all we're doing is removing and adding from the hash set. I think that's pretty simple. We're not manipulating any pointers by doing this portion. So I don't think it's crazy. Other thing is one last edge case. Imagine we did not delete the root. This is what our result looks like so far. We just have the root in the hash set. Then suppose we want to remove two. We want to delete this node. We'll do the like pointer manipulation, right? We'll end up returning null to the parent. But if we try to remove this from the hash set, well, it doesn't even exist in the hash set to begin with. So that's an edge case. Before you try to delete from the hash set, make sure it actually exists. In Python, there's a built-in method called discard that will allow us to do that. So let's get into it. I think it's clear that this is going to be a linear time algorithm because we're just traversing over the binary tree. Memory complexity is going to be big O of n, mainly because of that hash set. So now let's code this up. I want to take just 10 seconds to quickly say I finally launched the Python for Coding Interviews course. It has a bunch of interactive lessons like this. We were just talking about discarding from a hash set. And the reason I'm using discard rather than remove is because discard will never give you a key error if that key doesn't exist, whereas this one will. It's something that you could also just use an if statement for, but I think using discard just makes it a little bit more concise. It's kind of worth knowing, I think. In case you were wondering like what my thought process was when I came up with my solution, uh, this is more or less what it was. But let's go ahead and start from scratch. Like I said, this is kind of going to be like a hash set problem. So first, let's convert to delete into a hash set. It's given to us in the form of a list, but we can very easily work around that. And the other thing is the result. I'm going to call it the result set. 
and I'm going to initialize it just with the root. To initialize it with a value, you have to actually pass in a list. Another thing I think I cover in the Python coding and review course, we're passing in a list with just the root, and this is what we're ultimately going to return. But we want to return it in the form of a list, not a hash set. So let's do the conversion right before we do that. Now for the DFS, I'm going to create a helper function. It's a recursive function, of course. The parameter is going to be the node. Base case is always going to be if not node. Go ahead and return null. So we'll do that like this. We know that we're either going to return null at this point if we delete the current node, or we're going to return the node if we don't delete it, right? So we could use a couple if statements for that, but I think a concise way and also a pretty readable way is to have a variable. So I'm going to initially say my result is going to be the node. So we're assuming we're not going to delete this node and that's what we're going to end up returning. But if we do delete it and how do you know if we delete it? Well, if a node dot value is in to delete, then we can say the result will now is actually going to be null. And we're actually gonna do a bit more than just that. If you recall, if we're deleting a node, we probably want to remove that node from the result. So we can do that like this, uh, result set dot discard the node. Remember, when we delete a node, we want to set its left and right child. We wanna add its left and right child to the result. So we can do that like this, result set dot add node dot left. Now suppose node dot left is null. We probably don't wanna return null in the result. So I'm gonna just have an if statement. So if node dot left, then execute this. I could put it on the second line, but I feel like that's actually less readable just because we're getting pretty nested here. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there, but obviously it's not a big deal. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to then just kind of update it. Same thing with the right side, right child. If it exists, go ahead and add it to the result set. And that's more or less it for the deletion case. Next is the recursive step. Remember, we're going to obviously run DFS on the left side and right side. So just a couple of recursive calls for that. But remember that the return value is relevant in this case. Let's try to fit everything on the screen. But the return value for these is relevant because we do have to do the pointer manipulation if we want to actually uh, delete the node itself. So here I'm going to say node.left is going to be the result of that. Node.right is going to be the result of that. So this is the entire solution. Let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. Well, I guess it would be the solution if we didn't forget one very important step to actually call the recursive function. That's always what I end up forgetting. So let's just pass in the root for that and let's do this. And there we go, it works, it's pretty efficient. This is not my first time solving this problem, by the way. It looks like I actually did solve it four years ago, a little over four years ago, actually. And if we look at how I solved it last time, I think it's pretty similar, but I actually do think today's solution was better than this one because it looks like I actually had to call the recursive function twice in that case. Honestly, not sure exactly why I did that. Oh, actually, never mind. I'm misreading this. That's the recursive call in the recursive function. It looks like this solution probably is pretty much the same. It's just that I didn't nest this function inside the other one. Anyways, hope you have a good day. See you soon.